All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Another Bourbon Show. Uh, tonight, we're going to be drinking a uh, something we have to drink upside down because it comes from the other side of the planet. We're going to be drinking some Starward Twofold. It is uh, an Australian whiskey that I do not know much about. So, Ryan, tell us about it. Yeah. So, it is from Australia. It's a relatively um, new company, at least to the States. Uh, so, this is a double grain Australian whiskey, wheat and malted barley, and it's aged in Australian red wine barrels. And if I had to guess what red wine barrels, it's probably... A company called Penfolds or one of the treasury wineries, which you see like 19 Crimes or Lindemann's Penfolds. It's probably a, a red wine barrel um, from from one of those wineries. They don't specifically say where um, the wine barrels are from. But yeah, I guess, um, you know, all the malted barley and, and everything like that, obviously, it's going to it's going to have a, a big scotch influence. But yeah, it is made in Australia. And it's missing the E, so uh, so that tells me that it's probably a Scotch style. Yes, sir. And I just poured it, and it's the first time I've ever seen it. It's got a very, like, rosé color to it. Yeah, it's got, see. like, a light pink. Yeah, it does. Definitely does. Yeah. Like, I'm not a, I'm not a wine drinker, but I do know what rosé fucking looks like, and that's, like got a pinkish there, hue to it there are a lot of rosés that look like this and then you know you see some that are almost bright pink but yeah oh, it's, it's got a very it's got a very red wine nose to it too yeah it does yeah and the thing with um to get nerdy australian red wines um obviously the climate's a little harsher so the grapes yield like a you know a spicier red wine note so we'll see if that reflects it all in the whiskey itself there's some really good wine from Australia, isn't there? There is, yeah. Penfolds, which is the winery I was just talking about, they they have a bunch of wine. You know, some of the they're definitely one of the companies where they have some red wine aged for some of those same years as like Macallan and everything like that. And you'll see their bottles go for crazy prices. Nothing to the level of Macallan, but it's very sought after after wine. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. So this is what, 80 proof, you said, Ryan? This is 80 proof. Yes, sir. And um, you remember the mash bill? So it is, let me get it here, a blend of 100% wheat whiskey and 100% malted barley. So the wheat whiskey comprises 60% of the blend and the malted barley comprises about 40%. Okay, very cool. Yeah. And Stephen, why don't you tell us what you think about that label? Yeah, so I think this label, I don't know. It's, um, it, fuck it, it's a 10, okay? <laughs> it's a 10. I love this label. I think it's a really cool looking label. Um, and I want more labels like this in whiskey. That's just, it's very unique. There's not a lot that looks like this. Um, and it's just, it's cool. I think it's a cool name. There's a lot of cool colors in it. It stands out. It still has some really nice like golds and blues and whites in there. I like choosing those as like the forefront colors. But I love that dark blue color and, and like the navy blue and the blacks mixed with that color that we're talking about in the whiskey itself. I think it stands out really nicely. And I love how informative the label is while still being a distinct, unique look. But it's so easy to read the the percentage of alcohol, the amount of whiskey that you're getting, what kind of whiskey it is, the, the finish and everything. It's just, it's a very unique, creative way to display all that information, but it looks nice. It looks cool. I would buy branding for this. Um, what more could you want? So that's why I'm giving it a 10. It's an actual 10? It's a 10. There's the bag. No shit. Yeah. I thought about I going would... nine at first, but I was like, fuck it. No, there, there's really nothing I can really knock it for. So I'm just going, I'm going for a 10. Why not? It seems very Trekky, which is not a bad thing necessarily, hmm. but it, well, I mean, like, it's called it, Star Wars. I mean, what do you want? I know, but like, okay. So why is it Star Wars? Does it need a reason? 
I no, mean, I'm just a, curious. What's in a name, Dan? You know what I mean? I, Everything. So I, I always try to um I always try to judge the label. I don't necessarily know like if I'm just looking at something, standing in front of it, I'm not gonna necessarily know the backstory. It, usually that requires picking it up and looking at it, unless it's just a very obvious name, like a name of a person that you might know or something like that. Barring mm. that, with like four roses or something, like there's a cool story behind that, but are you going to know that just looking at it or you have to read it? So here, right. I don't really mind. I mean, for all I know, Star Wars is just, you know, it's just gobbledygook. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything, right? But it, it just sounds cool to me. It looks cool. And um, the information is well displayed and it stands out on the shelf. So okay, cool. that's why I, I give it that. And, and there's a couple other bottles we just haven't had on this show yet. You and I have talked about, Dan. I think the Cole Keegan was either a 9 or a 10. It's right up there. But... Um, yeah, there's some other bottles I do think are tens. We just haven't had them on necessarily. But yeah, this one okay. to me is right up there. I think it's awesome. Awesome, cool. Okay, I wouldn't give it a ten, but I don't rate labels. Um, I don't would think you, it's what would you give it? Uh, probably a seven. Really? It, it, so, so it's not that I think it's bad. Mm-hmm. I just don't think it's anything special. I don't think it like. Um, yeah, I don't think it's anything that's like, wow, look at that. That's a cool label. No, it's not. In my opinion, like, um, I will say that I have noticed it on the shelf numerous times, and it caught my eye. However, I've never bought it, so it's doing part of its job in catching my attention, but it's not doing the rest of the job, which is giving me a reason to buy it. I see. So, and that's part of my thought process on my seven. But again, I don't rate labels. You do, and you give it a 10. So, yeah. And I mean, it, all argue. ratings are relative to other labels, too, right? Like, if this was the only label I was seeing, it'd probably be lower. But because there's so many labels, you know how many points I give this one extra just because it's not a square label? Like, they have how an many? interesting shape to it. How many I, extra points? I'm guessing at you least asked. five. I'm guessing it's <laughs> because it seems so it's so nice to just see any bottle that breaks a mold yeah. these days. You know what I mean? There's so much whiskey that looks the same or similar. Not that not that there is And it's asymmetric. Does that help or hurt? Yeah, I, I well, it is symmetrical, right? I don't think so. It's just turned on its axis a little bit. Oh, I guess it is. Yeah, okay. it definitely is, yeah. Yeah. So I didn't so the bottom left, I didn't see that it had the same as the top right. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, to me, it's just really, really cool. The design is is cool, and um, you could even, abstra- uh, you know, abstract that design to be just like some core components, like that shooting star or whatever, and uh, make them really, really like minimal branding. That'd be cool. I think they've set themselves up with re- some really cool branding. Okay. Yeah, and compared to um, the other bottles that they have as well, um, here I'll share my screen real quick. Um, this is my favorite of the three in their line. Can you guys see this? But um, Not yet. No, we can't. Yeah. Can you see it now? So yeah. 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 You got the Nova there and then the Solera. But I mean, all cool bottles, though, that stand out. I really like this one, too. Um, Those are cool names, too. Like it's it's unique branding. Yeah. And on top of that, um, a big selling point that we've had at the company I work at is the San Francisco uh, World Spirits Competition, which is there's a million spirit competitions, but that one's probably it is the most highly regarded not one. probably it is it is yeah um starward was named the most awarded distillery of 2022 so a lot of uh for i think they've been around for you know 15 16 years now so it's pretty good honor yeah and i mean they just got a 10 on my label review let's not let's not forget let's that. not bury that lead yeah i mean I, about i'm sure that they're gonna put that on their website <laughs> yeah. quickly I, they're gonna I fly would... us down to melbourne or however Australians say it apparently it's Melbourne. Mel- Melbourne Melbourne well what do you say we give this a go and Let's do uh, it. yeah I'm eager to see what we think of it cheers cheers well I'm not gonna sip it yet yeah that's true that nose is freaking fantastic <laughs> it smells like like a scotch you know that peated smell but I, so I'm getting some yeast from it like yeah some unbaked bread yeast but a, but a really nice sweetness too, like a peach sweetness almost. I definitely 
the red wine barrels you could definitely get off the nose too absolutely <clears throat> yeah it smells like humidity there was just humidity on these barrels <laughs> that's what it smells like to me <laughs> just a dewy morning in the outback <laughs> you know, a lot of vanilla too a lot of vanilla I'm really struck by how sweet it smells. But I'm gonna I'm gonna sip it. Cheers. Some, a little bit of Vegemite, maybe. <laughs> a little shrimp on the Barbie. What do you think, Dan? Interesting is gonna be the first words that come out of my mouth. In what way? Gonna, you're gonna have to wait for more. <laughs> It's um I think we got the non-alcoholic version of the beverage, maybe. <laughs> because there's no burn to this whatsoever. There's no this is one of those bottles that I I mentioned this with something else before, but it's one of those you start drinking it and you're like, ooh, maybe I should slow up a little bit <laughs> with my whiskey drinking because I taste nothing here. Um it's not that it doesn't have any flavor or anything, quite the opposite. I think there's plenty of flavor, but um it just does not feel like alcohol at all yeah so when a lot of people drink whiskey they're asking they're hoping to find a, a smooth whiskey this is it this is extremely smooth easy to sip um it's got a ton of characteristics of a scotch specifically like a highland scotch um it is not nearly as sweet as I expected it to be. I thought it would be like, like genuinely like sweet, sweet. It's not. Um, the aftertaste it's not bitter. Is, is pretty sweet though. Is it? Yeah, just resting my mouth now. I feel like okay. there's there's plenty of sweetness on it. I hope I'm not saying. I, I hope that doesn't come across as a negative because. Uh, I don't mean it as a negative. I just expected it to be sweeter than what I'm tasting. Um, but it, I, I'm like, I'm taken aback by how much it reminds me of a Highland Scotch. Um, so Highland Scotches are not, they're very rarely peated. So you don't get that peatness. You don't get that smokiness. Um, and this does not have the peaty flavors, the smokiness, um, but it has the subtle sweetness, the vanillas and the caramels. And like what I, I think what I'm actually most surprised by is how little wine flavor I get when I got so much on the nose. I get a very creamy texture to it too. Yeah, I think some of that comes from like the vanilla or coffee creamer kind of uh, mellow notes that are in it. Yeah, but mellow is a great word for it. Yeah. Mellow is a great word for it. But it's, um, I still feel like there's some sweetness, mainly after you've taken a sip and you're kind of just letting some air get in your mouth, like talking back and forth and whatnot. I feel like then I have some sweetness to it. But other than that, I get a lot of, you know, that like a dull smokiness and vanilla, those kind of things. And uh, yeah, if, I mean, it just seems like a low proof scotch, basically. Um, if you've ever had one, that's kind of what it tastes like, but it's not bad per se at all. And like you said, Dan, very, very smooth. Um what what proof is this again 80 yeah 80. yeah so i guess you'd kind of expect that it's it tastes 80 proof but easy to like e easy to drink that's like the defining characteristic of it in my opinion just easy to sip brian you haven't said anything about it yeah you know i definitely i don't get much smokiness to it and I like the comparison to a Highland Scotch because I, I really don't like the PD stuff. Um, that really turns me away. And the longest time I didn't want to drink any Scotch because I just assumed they were all like that. But it's nice that you kind of get some complexity with, you know, that creamy, that's the vanilla-ness. I, I get sort of like a some sort of berry to it as well. 
it is sweet on the end. I get that too. Not not right in the beginning, but um, just a soft layer of baking spice too. When I first sipped it, I was like, oh man, it's a little spicy. And then it leveled out immediately and got sweet. So um, yeah, it's an, it's an interesting one. I don't really know how I feel about it. Every time I drink it, it just leaves me a little confused. <laughs> I would love to see this actually in a blind with some other popular stuff. Like, I'm not saying it's the same thing, but put it in a blind with like Jameson for a lot of people who typically buy Jameson. And I think they'd be super turned on to this. You know, I think it just yeah. needs the right. My first reaction is that it needs the right framing. Because I think a lot of people who would watch another bourbon show, for instance, may not like this. Good um, news. For like Star Wars. Because nobody, nobody watches <laughs> another bourbon show. So that's not an issue for them. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but, but if they did, I'm saying that crowd, though, you know, okay, the, cra yeah, the yeah. crowd of five, whatever it is, <laughs> those people are not going to necessarily like this. But yeah. I do think that there's a, there, there is absolutely a crowd for this, as evidenced by, you know, the golds and whatnot they've received for this. Yeah. But um, I think it, if you frame things in that way and you view it in the right lens, I think that this is, to me, I would much prefer this to Jameson, for instance. Me too. I think that, I, I, yeah, I think that comparing it to Jameson is a little bit off the mark, though, just because they're very different. Yeah. I would put it against a Dewar's or a, like a mid, mid to low tier Scotch. Well, it's not insulting it, comparing it to Dewar's. There's nothing wrong with Dewar's. I can tell you one big thing that's wrong with them. One big thing. Distribution? Who they're owned by. Okay. <laughs> no. It's not insult them, dude. Okay. Sorry. My bad, dude. My bad. <laughs> no, but I, I, so yeah, that that I, I see where you're where you're coming from, Steven. I would just not jump into the waters with the, comparing it to an irish whiskey because sure. like yeah so but i, I wholeheartedly I, see where you're getting i think typically people the reason i bring that up is because it's a super popular one that i think people default buy at this point and yeah. the people that drink that i think are um they're just more open-minded to different tastes than i i don't oh, okay. i don't necessarily think that maybe you feel differently but i don't think that like american whiskey and bourbon drinkers are necessarily that open-minded i think they kind of like some certain notes yeah um so Probably anyway right. I, I i if you get anywhere outside of that category but still in, in the whiskey adjacent areas i think that's the market for this yeah yeah but it, it's for sure interesting you know who would like this i think for instance is like nolan i bet nolan would really dig this yeah probably i could see that yeah so that's the kind of thing I'm talking about, where I think he's a guy that would typically, a lot of times, maybe he's changed a little bit, but would typically just go and default to buying Jameson or Red Breast or something like that. Mm -hmm. But in this case, I think if you're like, hey, check out Star Wars, he's the perfect candidate for somebody who I think would love this. Yeah. I'm surprised being down in Australia, how sweet this is, just because of the climate and how the you know the grapes grow because it was aged in the the red wine casks or barrels that you get a lot of spiciness from that red wine. And there's a little bit in front, but it really layers out to be really smooth. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's an interesting whiskey for sure. I'm enjoying it. I don't know where I'll rate it yet. That's, <laughs> this is another instance where I really wish that we could, uh, it would be super interesting to taste this before it got finished in those barrels, I think, because I'm really curious exactly what properties it picked up and what it, what it tasted like beforehand, because I get a little bit of sweetness at the end that it sounds like maybe you guys aren't even getting, but I'm getting a little bit now. I'm getting a little bit now that I'm focusing on a little, a little bit more, I'm, I'm picking up more sweetness. Uh, specifically on the back end, it's an acidic my, sweetness. It's almost base like of my tongue, candy. back of my throat. Yeah. Could hey Ryan, can you check? Is it 
finished in red wine barrels or aged in red wine barrels? Let me double check. Because on the bottle, it just says Australian red wine barrels. In the back because door. they don't have to use new barrels at all. No, that's true. Matured in Australian red wine barrels is what it says. So to me, that sounds like it's it's never been not in a wine barrel. Got it. Oh, then I scratch what I said. That makes more sense. Um, they have uh, some tasting notes on their website, and the word they use for the sweetness that we're talking about, and instead of like, uh, what did I say earlier? Like a, it was like, I wasn't paying attention. Nobody pays attention, Stephen. Well, that's not true because you said that was a good word that I used, but I can't remember what word Mellow. that was. Mellow. They, they Mellow use the corn. word faded. They say faded sweetness. I can see that. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I, yeah, I see what you're saying. And they've A got delicious a, dry finish with a faded sweetness. And they've got a picture there, Ryan, of like, it looks like some grapefruit drink next to it. And then they got some Star Wars and then they got some s'mores. And I, th- yeah, I actually think s'mores would be an excellent pairing with this. This that that is pretty cool. Here I'll share it so you can see Dan. Because um, I think graham cracker in particular would be um, awesome with this because the like the vanilla taste. Can you guys see this? Yeah. Yeah. So. Huh. I could go for that. Yeah, that looks that pretty damn good, man. Yeah, I was like that. <laughs> That drink looks good too. It's like a great. So I'm not getting much or something. fruitiness, but I'm but like where they say smooth, goddamn right, it's smooth, like crazy smooth. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to yeah. think of what mixed drinks this would do, would be good in. Now that you like, you showed me that grapefruit. Would well, you guys ever have a highball? Because I think that's what maybe was in that picture was like some sort of like grapefruit highball. Yeah, I'd have a highball. Yeah. What do I have in there? Seems like it, it could go well in any like refreshing type drink like that. So this is what they say about the barrels. We carefully select barrels from nearby vineyards making bold Aussie reds like Shiraz, Cabernet, and Pinot Noir. These give our new make spirit this give our new make spirit tasty fruit, caramel, and spice notes. To keep as much of a fresh red wine flavor profile as possible. We source barrels from just a day's drive away. We either lightly char or quickly blast barrels with steam. Many are still wet with wine when we fill them, contributing to both the flavor and the rich golden hue of our whiskeys. So apparently they're toasted and steamed. It's not, it's not burned or charred. It's toasted. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were probably toasted before they put wine in them too. Yeah. Don't they normally toast their barrels? Or and well, bro- no, I guess they just season them. them. Yeah. They just they just let them let it sit. Yeah. Okay. That explains the soft coloring. Yeah. All right, so I just I don't know what combination I mixed it, but this is some Excel ginger beer with some of this i don't know what percentage is but i just kind of dumped some together yeah and you actually did the ginger beer first and then poured in the alcohol which is usually a good recipe for getting fucking drunk <laughs> is it oh yeah if you're not well, seeing I'm... your percentage carefully oh yeah i only had like three ounces of this to start with so chances of me getting too drunk are pretty no let me rephrase this chance of me Chances of me getting drunk from Star Wars are pretty slim. <laughs> if I start reaching and grabbing, then it escalates pretty significantly. But then we got a problem. This goes this goes well together. Does it? Yeah. Do you see this branding on the Vitalis bottle, Ryan? On what bottle? Vitalis. It's one of their offerings. They actually did what I was talking about where they did a more minimal branding because they have like, they show the box as well. Here, I can share my screen real quick. Yeah, share your screen. See what they did with more minimal branding. This is exactly what I was talking about. Kind of abstracted it out. Oh, just cool. Oh, yeah, that is cool. 
and then when they show it in its full presentation i mean that's fucking that's gorgeous yeah that's awesome you're always talking about how like bottles that look like they're on don draper's you know bar cart i mean to me this looks exactly that's some 70s you know look at that color to it too yeah dude that's that's seriously fucking gorgeous yeah i like that a lot that's a 10 and then look how cool this is look at this they have this 15 year journey to the bottle over here i mean you can't read it all from this but that's cool it's a cool box and everything well are we ready to rate rate this let's do it man i'm ready i'm gonna go first can i go first yeah six seven six yeah i think it's yeah six point seven um i think it's i think it's it's super smooth um it's it's a good whiskey it is not higher because i don't find it interesting enough like it's interesting because it's weird but not interesting because it's like wow that's really good interesting it's just it's just fine in every way shape or form um i've really been enjoying this ginger beer and starward combo that goes really well together um i'm glad i had a couple ginger beers in there uh but i think what i like so much about it is that it's really good ginger beer with a with a fine whiskey um so i'm going to go with a 6.7 uh for 28 35 bucks whatever it is in that range i think that it's money well spent uh but i but I think you could also do better with that $35. Not that you'd regret the $35 that you spent, but you can do better. But it's different than many of the things you would spend $35 on. So, so six, seven, okay. that's where I'm at. I can go next. I'm pretty close to you, Dan. I'm gonna go with six, nine. Um, it is very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Any scotch that isn't peaty, I, uh, I, you know, I'll probably give a six, five or higher. Um, this is really good. I mean, for, for what it is, the 30, $35 range, um, it's good value. You just wish it was a little more complex. Yeah. I was hoping to get more of the, um, sweetness that we got on the nose into the actual, um, overall. I mean, even though it was sweet, I wish it was just a little more touch of vanilla on it, but I did like the creamy texture of it. <laughs> Six nine. Um, <laughs> I I think um, I bet their their other offerings are really good um, based on how they're aged, and it sounds like they they use some better wine barrels for their their higher end whiskeys. It's cool though. I mean, Australian whiskey. I've never had one before. Thinking it's just going to be kick you in the face with spice and nothing else, just based on on how their wine is. Um, I thought it was good, not too complex, but very easy to drink. If you're someone who is looking to get into scotch, it's probably a pretty good introductory level type scotch. Um, maybe like a, like a brother's bond esque of uh, like bourbon to get you introduced into bourbon. I can kind of see this as the scotch alternative. Although I think this is a little more complex and doesn't taste as much like water as Brothers Bond did. But yeah, I'm gonna go with six point nine. It's good. Could be a little more complex, but you know, for its value, that's that's right on par where it should be. Yeah, going along with that point, Ryan, I think it is right along with where it should be, basically, is is what I would say. And to that end, I'm giving it an eight. Um, I really enjoy it a lot. I think it's it doesn't bother me at all that it's not complex. And I like it that much more than jim beam white label so um this is one that i think i'll return to um has a lot of cool notes to it that it's a great to me it the price point is right and it fits a great niche whenever i want something that's a little bit different than the the typical stuff that i buy um and you know on top of that uh it's it seems like it'd be versatile i feel like I, i'm going to try this in several different cocktails i don't know how well it will work but it's just it's right in that price range where I think that it's it's okay if it doesn't work. You know, it's fun to experiment with it and it's got a lot of cool flavors. Um again, I I much prefer it to some of the more mellow noted whiskeys that 
that I've had that are more like typical bourbon notes. So to that end, I mean, I, I, I fit it in in the, the eight range because it's it's something I'll return to, I think, and it's a great budget bottle in my opinion, so, so why not? So I'm interested to to try their their higher end ones. And I forgot to mention that bottle this is about 35 bucks at the store. Can you do that okay. take again, right? Can you just repeat all that? Because I burped over you. Yeah. Sorry. And I, here we go. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I, I forgot to mention. Yeah, I'll cut it. <laughs> <laughs> Thumbnail. And I forgot to mention uh, about 35 bucks for this guy. <laughs> 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 too bad you hey, just one actually, more time too bad you couldn't actually fart there, not, like if you actually <laughs> turned around you like spread your ass cheeks apart and just fart into your mouth <laughs> splatter on the camera <laughs> i'll have to try Y'all to get my hands on it there, there's a uh, shit a little bit when you fart right <laughs> not that i know i mean maybe a mic <laughs> probably a little bit right yeah <laughs> We're probably just touching and breathing and shit nonstop. Oh, constantly. Yeah. Some of us more than others. Yeah. That's why I don't. That's why I don't blow dry my hands. It's just blowing shit into your hands. Like I'll wipe it on my clothes. It's disgusting. Look it up. I'm not joking. It's fucking disgusting. I believe you. Okay, tell us about the price again, though. No, I'm not gonna fucking walk into that again. No, just do. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fuck with you. I swear to God. I'm not an idiot, dude. I swear to God, I'm not going to fuck with you. I know you're going to fuck with me. I'm not. 35 bucks for this bottle, guys. $35. Forgot to mention. <laughs>